Ah! Oh, good. Oh. <laughs> Wait, so I have to do 20 push ups? What's up, everybody? In this video, I'm going to share with you three things that you can do to help build a new fitness brand. My name is Kai. I help gyms, boutique studios, and fitness startups stand out in a very competitive market. Anyways, I was recently in New York for the New York Strong Convention. I'm in, baby. And uh, I talked to a lot of gym owners and fitness brand operators, as well as fitness startups. That's so cool. And they seem to be doing some really interesting things. There's a lot of cool companies there. You know those videos on the internet where like people like try shoes and then they just like sprint off? <laughs> The experience overall at the convention was great. I actually didn't know about the convention until like a few minutes uh, or <laughs> until there was like two hours left with the convention to go. Um, but I still ended up going anyways. I'm very glad I did. I started to realize a few things that some of these businesses are doing very well and some that could improve on it from a branding perspective. And I think that this video can both help them and potentially help you with whatever your fitness brand that you're trying to build. So let's start with number one. Uh, you have to commit to what makes you unique. That is the entire value that you bring from a branding perspective. And it's what's going to gravitate people towards you. You have to understand one, what that is, and then two, commit to it. The example I'm going to use is made meals. It looks like they're a farm to table, locally sourced organic meals. They're based in New York City. They have ready made uh, food delivery service, essentially. And I tried their food there. They were very nice to give me like a nice sample and it tasted great. I think that from a branding perspective, they have a differentiator that from what I've seen is different than what most of these other meal kits or meal delivery services are. And that main thing is that they're a locally sourced and organic meal. And that's the thing that they really should be driving and honing in on. They do this very well at the front of their website, but they don't repeat this anywhere else. I don't really see this as something that's like an emphasis. Um, there may be a little bit in kind of the packaging of their delivery, the, the bag, but beyond just that, you really don't see it anywhere else. For the photos, this is where I think is one of the weakest points of the entire business in terms of the uh, perception that they're trying to sell. And that is their meals don't look very appetizing from a picture perspective. And that's not anything that they're doing wrong. Like if you look at this objectively speaking, it looks good. Like you can't, you can't say that that piece of salmon looks terrible, right? It doesn't, it looks really good. But the way they present it is not conducive to what they're trying to present as a business, which is like locally sourced and organic uh, foods. Now I'm not saying that they don't do this at all. It just doesn't translate across the board to all parts of their brand. Something that potentially could help is if they took a little bit of what maybe Sunbasket does and puts the ingredients as kind of props next to the main meal. They can still keep the packaging in there. They could also have something like Factor where there's beautiful packaging. It's, the, it's front and center because it's a fully prepared meal just like they are and use that as another way to differentiate and showcase the feeling and the look of being locally sourced and homegrown. So to commit to the value proposition, not just by the way that you say it, but also by the way that you show it and by the way that it feels. Okay, on to number two, which is your name is incredibly important. And we all know that, but there are a lot of layers deeper than just what you choose your name to be. So. I talked to Gaines app and they have a really cool concept where it's basically like a betting app for calisthenics based exercises for people to bet on somebody competing against another person on a specific exercise like push-ups. How many push-ups can these two do? You bet on one guy, you bet on the other, and then you make money from it. Um, and I don't exactly know how the app works because I didn't see the actual app, but that seems to be the main concept. Now have to look at what other names exist within your industry or within the niche that you're, you're currently building your business in. So if you just go to the app store and type gains as an app, you'll see that there's a ton of other apps that have the name gains or gains app in it. And you can go to a website, you can go on Google and search for gains app as well. And you'll see that there are other people that have taken the name. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that you can't use this name. 
but it often means that or, well it might if it's been trademarked let's let's make let's go back there for a second so i would double check trademark which for now it looks like it's open and it's clean nobody has it um, and then you want to check the domain as well because if you don't have the domain or if you don't get a variation of the domain that can work with the business then that becomes really hard to start ranking up on like Google searches down the, down the road. But you know, I don't know what their actual customer acquisition strategy is going to be. I don't know if they're going off of organic search in App Store, probably not. Uh, it's probably gonna be a very community-based thing. Okay, I know it's dark behind me and it's been a while since I recorded the first part and I, I missed a few things, so I'm jumping back in here at the end. But basically when you vet the brand, you wanna make sure that it is, one, the trademark is available, two that you have the domain name in some format available and then three you want to make sure that the social media handles also in some format are available and uh, if none of those are available or if you have a lot of very very similar competitors i would consider changing the name and potentially trying something new uh, it's going to be an uphill battle if there's already an established business with that name within your niche within your industry even if all three of those are kind of uh, still open and available uh, but still nonetheless bet the name double check everything and then go for the actual launch with whatever name that you have now that's not saying that gains app name is not going to work by any means uh, this is just best practices and it will be harder for gains app to take traction uh, although i don't know if any of these other apps called the gains app or called gains on the apple store is really doing very well so i think they may be fine okay before we move forward hit that like and subscribe button if this is helping you out it'll really let me know if i'm doing a good job and what i could potentially improve on i'm really trying to like make these videos where there's going to be some actual value you guys can make out of this so um yeah let me know give me some feedback please number three you want to understand your customer and you want to be speaking to them in their language for this example, Synapse, I think they have a great product. Holy crap! Super job! It's just they're not speaking the type of language that the consumer would actually hear and then want to buy their product from it. So a lot of the conversation that we had was about kind of how the exercise worked, the mechanics behind it, the science behind it, and it's all really interesting stuff. But from a consumer facing perspective, the customer just wants to know like, what can this value do for me? That's it, that's all they care about. So you really have to understand one is, who are you targeting and who do you want to sell this product to? And then two, really start speaking in their language, for example, and this is just an idea, this is not you know something that I think they're going for, but uh, this product is, is small, it's compact, it can fit into a suitcase. It's a time saver in terms of exercise, although he made some very bold claims that I'm still cynical about. You can do 90 seconds of work and be done with that body part for five days. Really? Yeah. That's, right. a, that's a bold claim. It is a bold claim. I would love to try it. Yeah. But then again, I'm a cynical person when it comes to this stuff. I'm not gonna knock it because I haven't seen the science behind it, but this speaks to me like you know a, a certain persona of person that maybe travels around a lot, values their health and fitness, but doesn't have the time and the ability to consistently go to gyms. This could be something that they pack into their bags, take with them on a trip, just have to tie it up to something that's you know stable on the ground, and then get a full workout from it. I think that would be a great way to market this product to that specific type of user. I would also be aware of, you know, this is a pretty expensive product, so you definitely want people with the financial capability to afford something like this as well. So I'd probably start there. But, you know, again, this is me just kind of spitballing. This is not me doing a formal brand strategy audit or anything about this company. It's literally from the conversation I had with him that, that took about 20 minutes um, and trying out the product. So. Keep that with a grain of salt. The main thing I want everyone to take from this is that you want to understand what your customer wants and how your product can provide that value to them and then understand who that customer is down to the T, understand their demographics, their psychographics, and then really start to shift your language and how you speak about the product to cater to them. Also, one of the crucial mistakes you can make in the beginning is to say, I want my product or I want my brand to be for everybody. Because if you're speaking for everybody, you're speaking to nobody. And you really have to hone that down, especially in the beginning when you're trying to carve yourself a piece of the market. So don't make that mistake. And that is gonna help you 
sell way more product and just get way more attention about your product or service than simply speaking about the what and the how of what it is. To summarize, one, you wanna to commit to what makes you unique because that's really the foundation of what's gonna build your brand. Two, when choosing names, you wanna make sure that you have all the logistics behind the name down, not just a concept down. And three, you want to understand your customer and how to speak with them in their language. So with these tips, hopefully you can use them to build a nice foundation for your brand and uh, help you solve maybe some of those early obstacles in getting your product sold. Also, I wanna give a shout out to the other brands that were there. I had a great time talking with you guys, learning about your product or service and interacting with uh, the type of experience you set up at your booth. I think it was overall a great event put together by the New York Strong Convention. And uh, next year, I will definitely like know ahead of time and prepare myself better and go into it with a, uh, well, just, just to know that it, it, I also want to give a shout out to Macalco T. I met them at their booth. They were amazing with their product. I think that they actually have a pretty well-developed brand at this point. It looks like they understand what they're going for. They have a, a look and feel that they've already established. And their drink was actually really, really good. It was like tea with chocolate that is not super sweet. It's like hot cocoa, but not in a, it's like hot cocoa if it was a tea and it wasn't like, it didn't taste like just watered down hot chocolate. It was like actual, like hard to explain. It's like tea that was hot cocoa. I hope these tips help you build a better brand. Till next time. I have changed my mind. I'm gonna pay the $125 and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna see what's up. Even if I get nothing from this, of course I can get it some footage. Just another form of pushing myself out of my comfort zone and potentially wasting $125, but whatever. It's gonna be worth it, I think. My gut tells me it's gonna be worth it.